We are back uh, with um, the uh, practical session. So in this session we use uh, GIS in real time and uh, we examine um, this assignment uh, more in detail and, and sort of show some of the tricks that you need to go through to generate um, the products, uh, so the mineral prospectivity map and some of the calculations. Uh, so every, everything starts here with uh, this folder. We open it up and we sort of examine the folder. We have the assignment, of course, in here, but it's more interesting to look at data so the data that are contained in this project. Uh, so we have two areas that are critical. One is um, certainly the prospectivity training project. Uh, so you have a prospectivity project in here, which is an MXD project. Uh, and uh, the other is uh, this file. So this file is uh, the contingency statistics. Uh, so it does have uh, basically a, um, an indication of, of uh, the information uh, that pertains to the frequency that have been calculated for for these two um, yes for, for these two examples really so you have it there and uh, this other window is the one that has uh, uh, the formulas to calculate the key square value uh, so basically we take from these two tables which are equivalent to the, the ones I was showing in here they just have been grayed out uh, so you have to remember to replace the values in this one as well so they are indicated in blue but after that there is a, a set of formulas that will calculate automatically from these values on top uh, the correct uh, contingency coefficient uh, so the frequencies basically that uh, uh, are either calculated or are inputted by you uh, while looking at the GIS model, uh, so the unique conditions, basically. Um, if you don't understand what I'm saying, refer to the previous video. It does give some more information uh, about uh, uh, these aspects. Uh, but yeah, certainly here it's a matter of, of sort of checking this calculation and understanding what they mean and once you've, you've uh, sort of done that uh, you can also check the calculation in here for the key square value and understand what's happening in here for this calculation as well as well as, as your contingency coefficient calculation and also this is just the rescaling we, we multiply by a thousand so that we get integer values for the weighting um, so that's what's needed of course in this case you will have to compile these uh, parameters uh, and uh, uh, we will do uh, some of this later uh, but that's pretty much all is necessary to know so essentially you should get this, this statistics have been pre-compiled so you have part of the weighting has been already conducted uh, uh, you just need to do, do it for the geology, basically for the layers that are critical and uh, add essentially the key square values uh, by calculating them using the same type of formula. So use the same type of formula really. So in here we will have to uh, essentially uh, use the same type of formula and apply it and make sure that it is correctly uh, applied. So you need the essentially input values in, in the blue areas to, to make this zero become uh, a correct uh, parameterization. Uh, and that will automatically should populate also this area once, uh, once you apply or paste the formula that are on top. Okay, we can leave this and, and uh, start uh, uh, by essentially reviewing uh, the steps that are necessary. So in the first uh, really detailed step, we, we, we had to basically build a buffer. So we need to identify the location of this information. And so we open up uh, the ArcGIS project. I uh, will have to do some resizing. So um, be patient uh, while um, this um, starts. Uh, and there, of course, there might be problems during this uh, session that I have to sort of consider and uh, um, 
I will sort of try to solve things on the go if I can. Um, so let's resize this window and make sure that it fits perfectly in uh, the uh, YouTube format. So this should be uh, sufficient to illustrate some of the components. So here we have a bunch of data sets. Uh, you should be familiar with these data sets because we worked with them uh, in uh, the previous assignments, so assignments 5 and uh, and 6. Uh, and we can, for the moment, we can close this, this and, and sort of uh, those were the attribute tables information for some of these layers. Uh, uh, but yeah, we, we, we can also remove this uh, for the moment uh, and this should be pretty much what you see at the beginning of the project. Uh, so you would have uh, essentially a, a mineral prospectivity map uh, containing a bunch of, of layers that are polygons in this case. Uh, so we can switch things off uh, and, uh, and uh, see how they look like. So if I turn on... Uh, these are the buffers, so we have already a pre-compiled buffer in here that represents uh, uh, the intercepts with the albite alteration and the area of interest as well. Um, if we look at the geology folder in here, in the table of contents, uh, we have uh, uh, some of the source data that were used to generate this buffer which is uh, uh, the albite, in this case I have to move uh, this up so that you can see it, but uh, that's pretty much what, what we used. Uh, so we use this polyline, we can double click and we can parameterize it uh, so we can reduce it to a, a line and you can see how the line looks like. So you can see these were basically um, the linear features that were used uh, to generate this buffer. Uh, so we the first objective uh, if uh, we review if we review the assignment is to generate uh, so that's the albite buffer the one we just saw we need to generate a UC faults buffer of 25 meters uh, so let's see if the geoprocessing options are configured con correctly so I should get a, a, an image like this uh, so I can just open up uh, these and going to the geoprocessing up here and they, they pop up and I have geoprocessing options down here I click on this uh, and in here yes this is ticked uh, and also the background processing is unticked uh, and of course these are parameterization that will influence uh, some of the processing tools because we are working on the geoprocessing option and it's actually done uh, to speed up uh, our processing of layers because we don't have to reselect the file name every time if we tick this uh, uh, this option and, and this sort of speeds up uh, things a little bit uh, so we press ok we are in a position in which uh, we have um, configured our geoprocessing uh, um, scene and uh, we need to um, compute the buffer so how do we do that we go into the search in here and we search for buffer and we press this uh, button, the search button it pops up uh, a buffer analysis, so select this buffer analysis it should uh, open up a, a window like this uh, so usually to uh, input these fields uh, you can uh, drag things, uh, so if you have these UC faults uh, which we should do uh, so we can see them if I switch off my albite for the moment I can see uh, some of the structure I want to turn into a buffer so in this case these are linear features so polylines uh, we want to buffer them so we take that uh, feature so these UC folds uh, and we take them into the input features okay so that will take some time because it has to configure things uh, but we we get essentially an assignment uh, to the geo automatic assignment to the, the mm, correct geo database uh, which is uh, uh, here in the catalog i can look at it it's this uh, geo database so the home, home geo database you have pretty much all the information stored in the geo database so we are using 
some of the things we learned in uh, the previous uh, lectures that Andrew um, sort of kindly uh, presented. Uh, in this case, uh, the idea is to assign a 25 meter buffer. So I have already things in, in meters. Uh, so I just uh, add 25. Uh, and uh, there should be no other need really or other requirement uh, except to make, make sure that the name is, is meaningful. So this false buffer one should be fine. Uh, um, we, we press OK and uh, there should be a, a run of, of the geoprocessing tool that give me some, some output in text form and tells me some information and, and uh, essentially the execution and where, where the, the, the file has been stored basically and the name of the file in, in, in here and also some of the parameterization and also how long it took actually to, to perform this task which is reasonable, less than a second is pretty good so this is the output. Uh, we have essentially buffered our structures uh, and uh, yeah, we can measure them and, and sort of get an understanding of the thickness. It should be on the order of 50 meters uh, because uh, the buffer is 25 meters around the linear features as explained earlier. Um, so that's done. We step, we, we, we go ahead and, and look at uh, so this was this step and this one in here. We look at adding now a class. So we need to bring up the attribute table for uh, um, our uh, polygon layer. So let's look at the feature and, uh, and see whether we can perform this operation. So to uh, pop up uh, your attribute table, you have to right click on uh, uh, the buffer name and click open attribute table so it's quite simple and usually it brings up all the different polygons because this large polygon is composed of many uh, sub um, sub polygons uh, because they are separated in space so they are not a single polygon but they are grouped together and you can see that that in the attribute table because i can select individual individual polygons if i want to if I want to dis disable the selection, I click here usually, and uh, uh, sorry, I click clear selection, and, and that uh, that gives uh, um, the original sort of uh, unselected option. Okay, so in this case, we have to add the field in here, and uh, we need to call the field uh, um, class and add a value of one to that. So you click on in here. Uh, which is called uh, table options. So, so you click on table option and uh, add a field. And the field will be called class. And uh, I think it's, uh, um, uh, yeah, it's uh, a short in integer should be fine. Um, so we click OK. And then we have to go into the uh, editor up here. So make sure if you don't have it, right click on, on a gray area on the top bar and look for the editor and activate the editor. OK. Uh, in this case, we just have it already uh, uh, in here uh, tagged to, uh, to the uh, toolbar areas. So we just click the editor and start an editing session. Then we go in, in, in this uh, class uh, field and right click on, on it uh, and click on the field calculator and we add the one value to this larger window on the bottom. Then we press OK and automatically a, a field is populated with one, uh, which is what I wanted. Remember to stop ed save your edits and stop the editing session so that this gets recorded. Uh, and, and you have your class field and this class field is used in uh, uh, some of the processing that is conducted later. So we are now at the second stage which is essentially this stage of converting a polygon feature class into a raster. So this is a polygon feature class uh, so we need to work with the model builder window so uh, for explanation just look at uh, the previous video so this uh, 
uh, has to be opened up and, and we need to work with it uh, a little bit so let's experiment with it and see whether we can make it work so we click on the catalog and we have essentially a toolbox in here that contains two processing workflows and so I have to right click on the process and click edit and this will generate essentially a uh, feature like this so we can reduce uh, the size of the processing workflow so that we can see it uh, in this case I had already worked with this uh, so it's it's uh, already active um, but in your version it will not have uh, this uh, fault buffer so I'm gonna remove it just for the sake of this exercise uh, the objective here is to show you how you use the model builder so you will have to look for the data set you want to use and a way of doing it is to click on the plus and look for the fault buffer we have just generated fault buffer one so we're going to use that we add it to the scene and it pops up like the other input data and we use the connect to connect it in here and select in this option input features because it's an input data set and that uh, will not work because there is a configuration that needs to be done in uh, the polygon to raster um, tool so this is a conversion from polygon to raster why are we doing that because we want to get to a raster so that we can perform calculations with the raster calculator at the bottom here of the process uh, so rasterization is useful in mineral perspectivity because we can index the pixels and work with the pixels rather than work with polygons. So the value field in this way case will be the class field, the, the field we just generated, and all the other parameterization should be fine. So we press OK and everything turns on. And then we can check in here, validate our model and see if there are any problems uh, you might get some problems in your project uh, and those problems will likely reside uh, in the tools uh, so you will have to make sure that these paths are set correctly to your geo database uh, uh, and also that the file name is reasonable and and uh, usually you have to use underscores no spaces and things like that to make sure it works uh, so that that should be pretty much it to run this workflow and produce the outputs uh, which are essentially this uh, intersecting layer which represent unique conditions uh, um, you uh, just press the play button and see whether this works you might get red coloring with the warning messages you have to read them and try to figure out why it's not working uh, okay uh, in this case for me it's working reasonably well uh, let's see if it completes the processing but it's a common problem when you are working in ArcGIS with model builder to encounter difficulties in this process uh, so don't be afraid just check uh, try to understand the meaning of the different messages that you get of uh, the processing tool uh, once this process is completed uh, we are happy with that we save uh, and we close it uh, and we can examine the output uh, okay so the output are two layers uh, and these are representative of unique conditions so these are unique conditions of intersections of two layers of information in this first case uh, it's going to be the intersection between uh, uh, the albite alteration and the geology so you have uh, pretty much almost uh, 10 units I think or a little bit more than that uh, but these units uh, you can check them by enlarging in here so if you enlarge uh, you will be able to see the intersection of pixels you see that they are squared so those, those are your pixel in the raster image and they are more complex conditions in which you have uh, more complex intersections uh, and if you want uh, you can check these values uh, by clicking the I identify you can identify these parameters in here 
and they will give you the pixel value or the pixel class. This is a quite important concept because uh, you need to understand uh, uh, in the attribute table for each one of these layers uh, uh, the relative classes values uh, and match them with the frequency count. So you know essentially by looking at, uh, at this information you know that there are 432 pixels that are representative of the intersection of the yellow unit with the albite alteration. Okay, so that's quite critical because then if you right click and open the attribute table for, for this unit, which is in here, you have essentially a summary of all the frequencies and also all the relative class values that are the labeling that is used to recognize these different units. So you can think at, at this as, as the colors. So the colors have a number and it's an integer number. So you have to know how they match with the counts. And that's because we need to recognize things. So we need to, for example, recognize the statistics of this blue cluster and we see we have uh, a count of uh, 1430 and a pixel value of 41 okay so this is class 41 so we find it in here so if I click uh, I can select it uh, and you see that is actually what I was looking for right so now it's a matter of, of um, taking this information which is critical for us because it's a frequency statistics uh, so we take that frequency count uh, and we input it uh, in our Excel spreadsheet. So in this case, uh, it would be, uh, and this is why it's important, you need to figure out uh, where uh, the uh, this association exists. So albite present and uh, meta sediments and meta volcanics, so the unit six. And I believe that's exactly the example we are looking at at the moment. Uh, so how do we recognize uh, the value of this unit? Uh, it's one of those integer values. Uh, so that should be our 41. So we have to check that. Uh, how do we do that? We check uh, basically our predictor. So this is a predictor layer uh, against the original geological map. So you, you look for the geology and uh, there is a labeling in here and this is the unit six. Uh, so it's correct. So the unit six uh, is intersecting with the alteration. And so that will be my class 41. So if that's class 41, uh, then it does have a statistics of 1430. And that uh, uh, will correspond to uh, the observed information. So I take basically this statistics of 1430 and I paste it in here. So that will be my, my 140. One so cancel this and, and add 1430. Okay, we have uh, our contingency tables in here and we need to fill in this uh, blue area where we have no values. So we just looked at uh, the uh, unit six uh, and we saw that uh, it uh, uh, matches with albite uh, when we have the class 41. So if I look at the ArcGIS project, is this class 41 and it does have a frequency statistic of 1430, which means that I have 1430 pixels that represent the intersection between unit 6 and the albite alteration. So we take that statistic and bring it into the Excel table. So we look at uh, the two uh, pairs of objects, so the pair of objects uh, and uh, albite is present. This is the unit 6, uh, so I add the 1430. This automatically compute the marginals. And of course I need to do also this other case. So unit six when the albite is not present. So I need to recognize that on my map. And I can use the eye and query the polygon and see that basically I have the unit six 
in here which has a um, let's see uh, this is a polygon has a field value of uh, um, six so the object ID sorry is 36 so let's see where uh, this is located um, so we need to check uh, uh, the value of uh, the uh, essentially unique condition in which we have this layer not intersecting all byte so we will need uh, to identify that uh, so we need to select uh, basically um, the layer in here which is the um, intersection between all byte and the geological units and then I have to click on here and it's going to give me the count statistic and the pixel value which is 40 so if I click on this uh, it's basically this unit in here that doesn't contain uh, the albite alteration so that is how you recognize it and you also have the count statistic in, in this case which is 396689 so we have to take that value and impute that in here okay so I'll, I'll read it again so it's 396689 so let's check 396689 so that's my statistic uh, for anti-correlation so things that do not uh, they are in the same unit but do not match the albite um, so the same has to be done with unit 7 so I have to identify unit 7 on my geological map so what is unit 7 I have a unit 7 in here so I, I select the uh, topmost layer and I click uh, and that's my my unit 7 so it's the yellow unit so if I go back and go into my intersection and select this unit again I see that it has a pixel value of 60 so I can choose 60 and I see that it is as a statistic of 237588 so 237588 so I can add 237588 okay I have to look in the yellow unit if uh, there are actually pixel intersecting alteration so we can check that I think are these this one in here so we can click them straight away and there will be our 61 so 61 so these are highlighted now so 61 uh, uh, would be uh, 432 so there are only 432 pixels that have that statistic so we, we completed the table by adding 432 in here and uh, uh, we are left only with the 9 ABCD unit um, so let's complete that uh, by looking at where it sits in the map so where is it where what is my 9 ABC I think it's this one in here and so that would be my uh, pixel value of 50 and it's 130038 so 130 one three zero zero three eight then we have the nine abcd uh, we need uh, the one that intersects uh, basically so i have to look for small ones uh, that might actually represent uh, my domain so let's see if uh, if we can see that So by looking carefully I could find actually a pixel in here that represent one of, of the intersections between the albite and the unit 9ABDC and so on and uh, you click on it and, and it's exactly that one so it's the 651 uh, with 11 so we need to put an 11 in here because there are only 11 pixels that intersect this class so with this operation we have completed uh, what's required in terms of numerics uh, we have to report these values uh, on this other side as well 
So we will have to copy across 1430. So 1430. And then we copy uh, the 396689. So 396689. And then we copy 237588. 237588. And then we, we copy also this other one in here, which I think it's uh, 432, I think. 432, 432. So that's the count statistics. Then we have the 11 we just did, uh, and the 130,038. So 130,038. And that's changing my totals and my marginals and it's actually compiled all these statistics down here. So we are in a position, I think, in which we can examine how the key square is calculated. And you can see we are taking for the faults uh, basically the observed value, so the observed statistics, uh, and uh, we then uh, use uh, the expected statistics that is calculated off the marginals uh, uh, for the calculation. So these are repeated value. So the is the B4 and B29 cells. Uh, so how do we transfer this formula in, in, in this, this other context? Uh, we just need to look for each uh, observed value statistics uh, and report it in, down here uh, with the correct corresponding calculation and uh, since the marginals have been calculated already it should be automatically possible to copy uh, this uh, and paste basically the formula so I can paste the formula and I can check uh, essentially that I have the correct selection and this works for for this parameter but remember we are looking at uh, uh, basically the intersection between present uh, presence of alpite and meta sediments so it will be the 1430 really that matters and in fact here this is wrong so you have to place it in the right position and then press enter and that will give you the correct statistics uh, for this uh, i think uh, the contingency coefficient uh, is possible to calculate it uh, off uh, uh, the same process, uh, so you not need to check it uh, really well. So you copy the formula across uh, after you have understood what it means. Uh, so you paste it in here. So we paste uh, uh, the... Uh, I don't know what I did. I think I have to copy the cell. Copy and pa paste uh, the formula in here. And then you have to check the formula uh, and find out that it is correct. Uh, so in this case, what are we doing? We are taking the key square value twice, and we are taking the other key parameter, which is D6, which is the totals. So see, it's, it's kind of easy. We need the totals down here because we are working with the lithologies. Uh, and so we will simply double click in here, and this uh, E31 is fine because it's the key square value for this formula. But this D11 needs to be the totals. So that's that's the key difference. And then you can uh, uh, copy the formula for the coefficients in here. And copy that. And paste it in here as a formula. And check it again. Uh, and make sure that the calculation is done correctly. So in here this will be your total. And your square and the thousand you should get sort of a 20 28 value which is your weight you can you can write it in here you have determined the first weight uh, so that's your weighting scheme uh, this is the weighting scheme this has been already calculated here we are calculating it uh, we proceed with the same approach so we extend these formulas down here and we make sure that they are correct so in this case, uh, this is fine. 
Uh, I think, I believe it's fine. We have to check also these parameters, but it should be fine, these ones. Um, so let's see the first one. Uh, remember, you have to look for uh, the key feature you are interested in. So in this case, is the intersection of unit 6 and a byte. So this is the 1430. So that's your observed value. And so you look for the marginal that corresponds to the observed value and the total. And it's actually configured properly. So this one is uh, the case of absence of of a byte so we are up here so see the margin has changed we selected this one on the bottom and this one is right because it's on the same row so that's the correct calculation so that's fine um, we then check uh, the 7 ABC uh, where it's present so 7 ABC present 432 that's correct this one it's the um, Albyte absent uh, case for the 7, that's correct as well. So they look all correct, uh, so I, I will trust the last two. Maybe I shouldn't, uh, so let's see. Uh, I think uh, this one is uh, the 9 ABC Albyte present, uh, so 9 ABC it would be this 11, it's correct. Okay, good. Okay. Um, Let's populate also these other fields and compute uh, the uh, final weights. Um, we have, of course, uh, the need of checking for this formula, making sure that all, all the times you have uh, the correct selection. It looks like it's easy to do. Just need to adjust the formula fields, uh, and that uh, will make your calculation easily. And that's it. And um, then we transfer this formula and we exactly the same. So we extend the formula, dragging, dragging it, uh, and then make sure we select the appropriate field. So same type of, of work, really. And that is uh, my uh, calculation. Uh, Okay, I'm, I'm, I have to check, um, in this case I had to check the uh, value in the key square field uh, and these were erroneous, erroneously assigned uh, in this table on the top. Uh, so I had to basically go through um, these equations um, and if you see here we have uh, an example. So we have this value is extremely large uh, and it's leading to sort of exceedingly exceedingly large weights um, so usually you would expect to have the weights between 1 and 100 roughly so we have to check and make sure that the key, key square calculation is selecting the proper field and in this case um, is essentially looking at the pattern of albite absent uh, and instead it's selecting the albite present so that's where the error is so when when you do that you essentially uh, correct this problem and this problem was caused by the pasting really that we did uh, so it's nothing wrong with the formula it's it's rather the fact that we need to make sure that the parameterization is correct so if you double click in here you have the same type of problem uh, we are selecting the marginals uh, instead we need uh, the albite present pattern for the unit 9 uh, which is 11 so that corrects that weight uh, and then uh, you have to do the same for, for this one. You move it uh, and you select uh, the anti-correlation for unit 9 with albite uh, and uh, that will give you the final result. Uh, so in this case we use uh, the weighting, we transfer it, it's going to be 1, 1 again, no this is a 2 and this is a uh, 0 and this one leave it at 0 because um, it was a technical issue and uh, I prefer to have this weight set at 0 um, and also this other should be set at 0 as well and this that's linked to the problem of uh, very limited pixels in some instances the 
key square value is not really significant uh, and so it's uh, more appropriate to uh, consider that weighting zero okay once we've done that we have basically completed our weighting scheme so we just need to apply this weighting scheme to uh, these layers so we need to go back to the ArcGIS so we save this configuration we can save it very rapidly and we call it version 2 save it and uh, we have our records in here so we we can go back and uh, look at essentially at adding uh, a couple of weights uh, to our so we will add to the attribute table of, of each one of these two intersect intersection layers uh, uh, a new field so we add uh, a field called weight weight uh, we call it weight one short integer is fine uh, and uh, we press ok and then we do an editing session and in the editing session we change the values uh, so we will have to recognize again the correct units uh, and uh, apply the correct weight uh, but it's uh, relatively easy in this case uh, because uh, uh, when you pop up the statistics you can check the frequencies uh, so you will know that uh, uh, the 838 uh, which is the observed statistics uh, correspond to a weight of 46 uh, so you, we can do that so we can look at uh, the attribute the correct attribute table for the faults uh, so we open the, that and we look for um, the 838 statistics uh, and uh, we do add a field we call it uh, uh, weight uh, weight 2 press ok edit this layer so start editing and um, i think we can double click simply on, on the cell and just add the value which is 45 i believe let's check 46 46 so correct that uh, to 46 46 and then uh, we have uh, uh, these others uh, so there are other four so we have the statistics of the 109 so we go back to the table 109 let's let's find it uh, it's gonna be two so that's that's my two so one for zero nine has a value of two then one, 1035, 1035, 1035 uh, uh, as value of 15, 15, so double click on 15. Um, then we have the last one for the faults, which is, uh, where is it? I believe it's going to be a one, a one. So let's let's enter one in here. Remember to save your editing session. So you just click on save edits uh, and uh, stop editing, and that's done. Then we go on this other. It's a bit more cumbersome, has more units to to fill, but there are not much. There are ten, I think. Uh, so you have to check the count statistics again. Uh, so you go in, in here and look at. Uh, these others uh, so here we have uh, just a few we don't have all the units but you can place a zero for all the others so because they are not really intersecting any alteration so there is no sense in using them in the prospectivity model in this case uh, so let's focus uh, on these values uh, so the the 1430 has a 28 a weight of, of 28 so the 4030 14 1430 28 so again activate uh, the editing session otherwise you cannot edit the values 28 then we have uh, uh, a value of 1 for the 396 uh, a value of 1 for the 396 
so the 396 is this one has value of 1 uh, then we go back to to this one and look for the second one which is going to be 2 4 432 42 has a value of 2 so 432 has a value of 2 this other value is uh, this all, all other are 0 so are the, the 2 3 7 11 13 2 3 7 11 13 2 3 7 11 13 and we can put a 0 for all of them so it's fine um, so they have no weight really and um, that should be it as soon as I save uh, my edits uh, I should be fine in this uh, final video we look at um, the generation of, of a prospectivity map by integration of the two intersection layers that were built so we have these two processing products and we need uh, we have applied the proper weights um, we just need to combine them so we'll attempt this uh, using essentially uh, the second geoprocessing tool so the process tool we go into the edit and uh, what we have to check uh, is that this tool is configured correctly uh, I will uh, start from scratch by, by sort of uh, erasing the input data and check that I, I am using the correct ones so I just erase these two and I, I take uh, the correct ones into my model builder window and then I connect them with the arrow so that's how it works once you've done that you have to double click and check that the weights are applied correctly in this case we want to use the weight 1 and the weight 2 and uh, try to save the map outside of, of the uh, geo database uh, so save it uh, as an independent feature and uh, call it uh, prospectivity prospectivity uh, version 1 and save it uh, outside uh, maybe I'm, I'm actually using an underscore and it might be that this file name is too long so let's try to reduce that and see whether that uh, changes okay so that's uh, the correct path and then uh, uh, we press ok and that should be configured correctly we press the check and press uh, uh, play finger crossed and um, it looks like it worked so we can save this workflow and close it and we got essentially our prospectivity map uh, projected in here uh, you can see that um, a weighting scheme has been applied to pretty much the entire layer uh, but we have in particular uh, that we are interested in evaluating favorability of this layer in here so you have to turn off this uh, uh, first you have to change double click on prospectivity and, and select display because we need to adjust this uh, color scale if we click on the symbology we can essentially select a proper color scale which will be uh, essentially assigning a red color or a hot color to higher uh, favorability values uh, and a blue color to lower favorability values so this starts to make more sense and also we know that uh, the background values are not really interesting so we double click on that and we, we use a no color option for, for that okay so in this context uh, uh, this will be sufficient to complete the assignment because we can switch off these uh, uh, predictor maps and just bring on uh, either the Thompson map like this uh, or uh, the um, geology and you can essentially switch off the buffers uh, and any other buffer we have uh, in, in here and just keeping geology and structures and applying some degree of transparency 
so we might take this map to the top uh, and sort of uh, include it in here but it's pretty much showing the final result really so we have low favorability domains for alteration in here and high favorability in this domain in here which is where upper canada is uh, but this this area you know it's coming off as explained earlier as uh, particularly interesting so that's it i think this will help you with uh, your uh, completion of the assignment uh, and uh, uh, it took me roughly an hour but i had to troubleshoot uh, this final step uh, and uh, everything looks like it's working so i hope that uh, you will be in a position to complete your assignment uh, on uh, the date when we meet